So we just got alligator gar fry. They were spawned on the 7th of May by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service at their hatchery in Tupelo, Mississippi, uh, using wild adults. The reason we're introducing it is that it's a species that occurred here naturally, and it may actually be extirpated from the state, meaning that populations may no longer exist here. This is about 14,000 fry in these four boxes. This batch we're going to rear indoors. They'll be getting zooplankton, brine shrimp, and high-tech art artificial feed. They live in swamps, oxbows, sloughs, uh, embayments of large rivers that, that flood seasonally, and a lot of those habitats are disappearing. He cooled them down some so that you could ship more to a box. So that one's 62 degrees. Putting 70 degree water on the 60 degree water bags to, to slowly start warming them up. Kind of like the sturgeon uh, project that we've got going, since it's a large species, making it vulnerable to overfishing. It's long lived, it's slow to reach uh, maturity. So, you know, females uh, reach maturity at, I've seen cited 11 years, males mature at six years. So, you know, it takes some time for them to grow up to that size where they're capable of reproduction. So, the next step will be getting them used to our water not just the temperature, but the water quality. Cuba and Costa Rica have the most experienced culture in these and putting them on artificial feed. They're rearing them at like one fry per liter in the tank, uh, but some other people have gone as high as 10 per liter. So we're gonna do 2.8 per liter and 4.6 because we got too much to do in all of our tanks to do them at one per liter. They're a predator, so they're one of the natural checks for a lot of the forage species in, in the, that part of the state, you know, where they formerly occurred. So these have done what they call swim up. They've lost basically all their yolk sac and are ready to feed now. That's why they're up on the surface and swimming free. The food items include mostly fish, but they also have been found to, to be scavengers to some extent. And unlike some of the other gars we have, we have uh, three other species of gar, the long-nosed gar, spotted gar, and short-nosed gar. And they're mostly topwater predators, so they, they lurch just beneath the surface and they, they take fish that, that swim up in the water column. However, the alligator gar has been, it's been found to, to feed on bit more benthic or bottom dwelling species. We have two ponds where we've collected zooplankton and we're going to bring that in now and offer them the first feed. These will be getting zooplankton and feed and we'll give them zooplankton four times a day and have these automatic feeders that are offering a powder of semi-moist a salmon starter it's every 15 minutes. Like other fish species, these things grow fairly quickly early on. Like in the hatchery, they'll, they'll grow really fast up to a certain size. I've been told that they can hit uh, 8 to 10 inches in 45 days. Their growth drastically drops off and slows. Now that 10 inches, it may still only be as thick as my little finger. And I think the record was somewhere around 10 feet and 350 pounds. Mostly what's been reported now is six to seven feet and you know 150 pounds. These will have to be size sorted probably every week or two because they'll, they'll eat each other. Even all the way up to 12 inches, they're eating each other. And they're also kind of territorial, so they can't be very dense we're introducing these as young and we need to give them space to grow and reach maturity. So really until we can document natural reproduction, there will be a strict no harvest regulation imposed. <music>